artist Lillian Gray and today's lesson we are going sky high up into space. No, I'm joking, not that kind of space. We're talking about the seven elements of art, space, space within an artwork. Space is one of the seven elements of art, along with line, value, texture, color, shape, and form. Space is the area in which an artwork is organized. Space is always a part of an artwork, but sometimes in multiple ways. When people refer to space in an artwork, they could be referring to various aspects of the artwork. Such as the actual place the artwork is exhibited or created, or the negative and positive space of the artwork. So enjoy this video as I explain the various aspects of space in art. Site-specific art is artwork created to exist in a certain place. Typically, the artist takes the location into account while planning and creating the artwork. For this type of art, it's impossible to isolate the work from its surrounding environment. These can include sculpture, graffiti, installations and land art. One of my favorite site-specific artworks is a 300-meter mural that street art legend Keith Haring painted on the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall was a guarded concrete barrier that physically and ideologically divided Germany into two. Keith Haring painted his distinctive figures in the form of a human chain interlocking their hands and feet to represent the unity of people against the Berlin Wall. He did so using the colors of the German flag. The creation and process of this artwork brought a lot of attention to that specific place and space in history. This is similar to Banksy that created a series of artworks in Palestine's Gaza Strip. In 2011, there was an uproar when the artworks were literally cut out of the stone walls and removed from Palestine area to be exhibited in galleries. Banksy fans argued that the works was created for the Palestinian people. Out of context, it does not have the same humor and significance. There are two types of space, positive space and negative space. The actual object is the positive space and the area around the object is the negative space. Sometimes artists intentionally try to blur the boundaries between positive and negative space. Dutch artist M.C. Escher often plays with positive and negative space in his art, creating interesting optical illusions. He also often toys with our perception of depth to create interesting visual puzzles. The surrealist painter Salvador Dali also loved to play with positive and negative space in his artwork. This is a beautiful painting of his true love, Gala. Understanding positive and negative space is also very important when artists do printmaking. Printmaking are techniques such as liner cut, where artists have to cut away the negative space to get a positive print. In sculpture and other three-dimensional artworks, we call it open or closed spaces. Open spaces are empty and closed spaces contains physical structure. Then there is also white space. In design and art, we often talk about white space. But white space isn't always white. It is a design term. This is the empty space in a composition to create breathing space or focus in an artwork. The area you do not fill in your artwork or design can be a key element in your art. We also use space in 2D artworks such as paintings and drawings. As artists, we're often taking a 3D object and portraying it in a 2D space. So we need to create an illusion of depth. Many two-dimensional artworks create the illusion of a three-dimensional space by using some very specific techniques. Artists often combine these techniques in various ways to create depth in their artwork. These techniques include size, where we scale objects with a smaller object being further away from the eye. Here we can see Japanese artist Hokusai's artwork on how he uses size to create depth, with the smaller boats being in the background and the bigger boats in the foreground. Another technique artists use to create depth is overlapping, when we put one object behind another to show that the one is further away and the other one closer to the eye. 
Collage artist Marcella Mongrio creates amazing depth by overlapping various layers of his portraits. Another technique artists often use is placement, where we place objects on the plane. When we move further towards the horizontal line, we create an idea of depth. Another technique artists use is detail. By giving the object that's closest to the eye more detail than others that are further away creates a sense of depth. Here, hyperrealist artist Jason de Graaf uses this technique by blurring objects in the background and painting the objects in the foreground with extreme detail. Artists can also use color and value to create a sense of depth. By giving the objects closest to the eye much darker value and then gently decreasing the value as it recedes to the back. Here we can see South African artist Pirniev using this technique to create depth and a sense of space. Artists often create the illusion of space through perspective drawings. In art, we get one-point perspective, two-point perspective, and three-point perspective, where we create linear perspective with vanishing points and horizontal lines. The Renaissance art movement is known for its dramatic shift in use of space and depth, with early work using shallow depth and later works incorporating lots of depth. Leonardo da Vinci is known for using perspective drawings to create an illusion of depth in his work. One of the most famous being the Last Supper, where Christ's head is the vanishing point. When creating depth as an artist, you also need to consider your layers. This includes your background, foreground and your middle ground. But usually you need a lot more layers to create an expansive sense of space. When creating lush environments like this animation by Shy the Sun Studios, you can see that you literally Clean space, where we have a very little white space. Open space, lots of breathing space in an artwork. Cluttered space, can create a feeling of being trapped or overwhelmed. Symmetrical space, creating a feeling of balance. Shallow space, that has very little depth. And flat space. Next time you visit a gallery and you are looking at a painting, photograph or sculpture. How would you describe the way artists approach space? What qualities do you see? Now let's improve your own art. How can you create a better sense of depth in your artwork? Which techniques can you combine and which techniques do you need to practice to get better at? I hope you guys are blown away and you now know how to create depth or the illusion of depth in your artworks. This is Lillian Gray. Give us a thumbs up and stay tuned for the next Elements of Art video. Visit our website and buy our amazing worksheets to understand the seven elements of art. This is a great tool to save teachers time and for students to really learn how to apply the seven elements. The link to buy these worksheets is in the description below.